Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and, and thank you, panel, for being here. A um, couple questions, and Dr. Kahn, you're going to be my last one, so just heads up, because what you just said was probably one of the best things that's been said here today is about giving them the environment of what's out there other than just sitting behind a desk the whole time and being educated, but hands-on is, I guess, the word for it. Um, I'm going to follow up with my colleague from Northeast Ohio. Um, I, I'm from uh, Ohio also. I represent uh, a pretty unique district. It's, 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 it's urban, suburban, and it's rural. Uh, my home county is Muskingum County, and it's in Appalachia. I actually call it the Shaker Heights of Appalachia. It's the largest populated county in the state of, or the region of Appalachia. But going back to, you know, the need that's there and, and getting left behind, um, you know, those folks feel like they're being left behind. It's just there's no interaction there. Um, right now in that region of the state of Ohio, right now there's some negotiation going on with the petrochemical plant uh, that's going to provide – Four to 6,000 construction jobs uh, to a company called PTT. Um, it's part of the uh, shale play that's happening there. Um, Shell is right across the river uh, in, in Pennsylvania. But um, my concern is, and it's everybody's concern, and we have community colleges, we have four-year colleges working, trying to get this figured out for this workforce demand. What, what can we do to ensure that these rural and, and more lower urban communities get the same access to this? And I emphasize a little bit more, I mean, what you said for Representative Gonzalez. I just I want to push you a little bit more for ideas. So, as I said, one of, the, one of the concerns I've always had is that we get mesmerized by just one segment of the, let's call it the innovation ecosystem mm -hmm. that needs to happen. So take your example where you're looking at uh, the shale energy and, and looking now at either petrochemical or crackers and looking at polyethylene production. So that's great. I mean, that is that is a natural advantage for that region in the sense of you have a low-cost energy infrastructure and some uh, assets that nobody else has. It's a necessary, but it's not sufficient. I mean, that, that can be an entirely extractive economy. You can take that stuff out and take it somewhere else to do what industry would call the value add. Um, and so the, the goal really has to be, and I think this is actually something we can do much better, we have focused on the, the jazzy part of this, you know, the high-tech company, and the idea, you think about the Amazon discussion in New York, you know, the reason there was this big pushback is I think people are skeptical that that one, uh, that one employer, that one piece of technology will spill over and create an economic activity that benefits the region. Um, in manufacturing, the, the regional and suburb, the rural and suburban areas, including through Ohio and western Pennsylvania, they were drivers of uh, the middle class employment wave. And that happened largely not at the very top research intensive OEMs or at the base, it happened through the supply chain. The U.S. supply chain, I, I believe, is really in trouble right now. It's not seeing the technology benefits that the large companies are investing. And you can't, you can't just assume it's going to uh, come up from those base activities. So one of the reasons I'm excited about the manufacturing institutes is that you're pulling together a sector. that They work because you've got essentially a consortia of like-minded companies that share something. That consortia can take ownership over that supply chain problem and look at making sure that those investments, that capital, uh, are going to those plants. That's, gonna drive, that's what drives the employment. That's what's going to shape the demand for community colleges and others to step up and try to, uh, you know, retrain people to, to take those jobs. This is an area that, you know, has a habit of working hard and knowing what these jobs are like. Uh, you just need to be able to match up and, and make sure that these technology innovations, we don't just assume it'll happen, but we do it with some intent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kahn, as I said, I'll, I'll wrap up with, with a question to you. Um, what you did is something that I've done in the past, and that's uh, taking a business owner who is a personal friend and you know telling me how he can't find the workforce out there, young kids. Um, and I, you know, I make the suggestion: Have you ever reached out to a vocational school? Have you done this or a community school? Well, no, I, I haven't. I didn't know I could. I mean, people say you can't have kids come into the workforce, but you know, to me and my own background. I wanted to do what I was working for. I wanted to actually do a touch and feel and, and do that. And um, I had the vocational school reach out. We picked six kids, 
and three of those kids ended up getting jobs at this facility. So um, I couldn't agree with you more as far as getting them out there. Is your is PepsiCo? I mean, do they do? Do they take that real world experience and take them out there and, and let them see what the end result's going to be? Sorry, we expose them as early as even before they start college. We'll take high school students and give them. Because one of the things I'm competing for this talent is with these high visibility, sexy industries. And then you say, hey, how about uh, food and beverage production and agriculture? It's not as sexy as working for the latest AI company. But yet, the impact on the world and the impact on, uh, on our country is profound. It's every one of us consumes foods and beverages every day. And so getting them in exposed is part of that. But I want to just also um, emphasize one other thing. Manufacturing, as we all know, is going through a transformation. And with that, as our efficiency and productivity is going up, it is uncoupled from job creation. Let's not confuse that. Because as automation has come in, as AI has come in, we can still have that rural plant, but it's not going to have as many employees. And in fact, it's a log scale difference. Where we need to train is the human interface where machines aren't going to do. In order for us to remain competitive, we need to f that. So most of the jobs that are coming are actually coming at either the human machine interface or the human human interface. And a lot of our existing employees from the past in our education system was training people to do jobs that are actually are becoming obsolete, but being replaced by different jobs. So I want to really still emphasize that we have to think about retraining <coughs> and retraining a whole different skill set. That was not the case when I was coming out of high school and college. It was a 